Today I'm tying the Pheasant Royal Copper Caddis. That's me, Lance. I'm the creator of this channel and your normal, average, everyday guy who loves to tie flies. And today I'm tying a Pheasant Royal Copper Caddis, or the PRCC for short. One of the best features of the Pheasant Royal Copper Caddis is its ability to be fished as a dry fly nymph or streamer. If you are new to my channel and love to tie flies, click subscribe and hit the bell to stay notified of when I upload content. That's me, and this is my vice. After placing a size 10 TMC 5262 that has an 8th inch copper bead on it into the jaws of the vise, I wrap 8 wraps of .020 lead wire around the hook shank. After shoving the lead wire into the back of the bead, start the olive green UTC 70 behind it. Once the thread has been secured to the shank, cut the tag of thread and wrap it to the bend of the hook. To tie in the tail of the PRCC, pull a dozen or so fibers off a pheasant tail and measure those fibers to half a shank long from the tips. Using your material hand, mark this point by placing the pheasant tail tips into your thumb and index finger so that your fingertips mark the half shank point you measured. Line this point up so that it barely touches the bend of the hook and with the butts angled downward, wrap the thread around the hook shank. Continue securing the pheasant tail to the top of the shank with wraps of thread. When the thread reaches a bit behind the lead wire, cut the butt ends of the pheasant tail from the fly. Now even the tips of two strands of olive brassy ultra wire and one strand of red. Make sure they are even because if they aren't, you'll attract those pesky craw carp that nobody wants to catch. Hold the wire along the near side of the hook with your material hand. With the wire tips butted against the red wire, wrap the thread around the three strands of wire and the hook shank to about one third of the way between the lead wire and the bend of the hook. Gently pull one of the olive wires over the front of the fly. Continue wrapping the thread down the shank to two-thirds of the way between the lead wire and the bend of the hook. By bringing your thread over the fly with your bobbin hand and then handing the bobbin to your material hand on its way under the fly. Then your material hand will give the bobbin off to your bobbin hand all the way up and around the hook shank. Be patient, you'll get the hang of it. After thread has been wrapped down to two-thirds of the way between the lead wire and the bend of the hook, Bring the red wire over the front of the fly and continue securing the last olive wire to the hook shank with thread down to the bend of the fly. Now that the wires have been secured to the shank, wrap the thread to just behind the red wire. Wrap the backmost olive wire around the shank with butted wraps until the olive wire is snug behind the red wire. Now fold the red wire over the back of the fly and tie off the olive wire at just in front of the red wire. Pull down on the bobbin and helicopter the olive wire tag until it breaks off from the fly. Then wrap the thread to behind the last olive wire and repeat the process of wrapping and tying off the red wire. Once the red wire has been wrapped, secured, and the tag end broken from the fly, wrap the thread up the shank, over the lead wire to behind the bead, and build a thread underbody for the fly. When done, make sure the thread is hanging at the point behind the lead wire. Wrap the final wire around the hook with budding wraps of wire until it has been wrapped against the spot where the lead wire is seated. Tie off the olive wire with thread and pulling down on the pop and helicopter the final wire until it breaks from the fly. After all three wires are secured to the shank, with tags broken off, Twist a small amount of peacock ice dub on the thread and create the thorax of the fly with wraps of dubbed thread.
Once the thorax has been dubbed, wrap the thread to its middle. Take two strands of about four inches of medium black rubber legs, cut them in half, and lightly tie them to the fly with a couple light wraps of thread. Now that the legs are loosely secured to the shank, separate them so that one sits on the near side of the hook and the other sits on the far side of the hook. Tie the legs down with a couple more wraps of thread. Dub the thread with a bit of peacock eye stub once again, and cover the tie-in point of the legs by wrapping the dubbed thread around it. After the tie-in point is dubbed, wrap the thread to behind the bead. To tie the elk hair wing in, use a heavier thread. So whip finish and cut the olive thread from the fly. Start some black UTC 140 behind the bead and once it is secured to the fly, cut the tag off. Prepare a clump of yearling elk hair that is about 3 pencil width thick by cutting it from the height and removing all the guard hairs and under fur. After preparing the elk hair, the clump will be about half its original size. With your bobbin hand, grasp the butt ends of the elk hair, and with the thumb and index finger of your material hand, mark approximately one shank length from the tips of the hair. Use a pair of sharp scissors to cut the elk hair to just in front of the one shank point. Place the elk hair left in your material hand over the fly, with the butts placed over the bead of the fly, and wrap two light wraps of thread around the hair and the shank of the hook. While pinching the elk hair in your fingers, cinch down on the bobbin. This will secure the hair to the shank and flare the butt ends of the hair. Remove your fingers from the hair and wrap a few more tight wraps of thread around the shank and the hair. Put a couple three turn whip finishes on the fly and cut the thread away from the fly. Now that the fly has been whip finished, trim the legs of the fly to the back of the abdomen and trim any dubbing or elk hair that has gone askew. This is a pheasant royal copper caddis. The pheasant royal copper caddis is the fly of all flies. Fish travel from yards away to be hooked by this do-it-all fly. The PRCC is particularly good at hooking rainbow musky, an extremely picky fish found only on the shores of Arizona's oceanfront property. If you enjoyed this April Fool's Day fly, or even if you didn't, give it a like and check out my other tying demonstrations by clicking the playlist at the top right, or check out my most recent upload below that. Thanks for watching, and have a nice April Fool's Day.